um, I. Um, we're getting ready to kick off some uh, Age of Sigmar action down at the shop tonight. Uh, what you're seeing um, is a top-down view of the table. Um, we have Caradron Overlords uh, versus a mix of Nurgle and Slanesh um, on this super awesome uh, lava table, which has all that amazing Games Workshop corn uh, castle terrain. Uh, actually, interestingly enough, is is currently not uh, no, sold any any longer, which is really sad. Um, that said, um, pretty uh, pretty big turnout tonight. We have uh, about four separate games, a couple of like, a few people mixed in together. Uh, so it's a lot happening tonight. Um, pretty excited. We're, so let's uh, take a look. Uh, so we're continuing um, our uh, oh, there's the cameras. Our um, Isles of uh, Argentinium campaign in the realm of metal. We um, and tonight's game is a uh, blood and glory battle plan, where two two armies meet upon a battlefield, each ready to deal death and destruction upon their hated foe. The conflict will be settled in blood between the two rivals, with spoils going to the victor and death and dishonor to the loser. Um, so it's a pitched battle, right? Uh, there's some setup happening, and uh, the battles fought to control four objectives. They're located at the center of each quarter of the battlefield, and uh, starting up from the third battle round, one player ex immediately wins a major victory if they have control of all four. Um, and if neither player has won by the end of the fifth battle round, or the time allotted for the game runs out, the player that controls the most objective wins a minor victory. If both players control the same number, they must add up points values of enemy units that have been destroyed um, during the battle. Um, if one player has a higher total, they win a minor victory. Right? So it's all about grabbing those objectives early and uh, staying on them. It's a lot of interesting stuff. So between, um, between run in the store and... Uh, uh, between running the store and doing the stream, I'm going to kind of be bouncing back and forth. So don't hesitate to post up and ask any questions. And, uh, yeah, don't hesitate to post up and ask any questions. I'll be bouncing back and forth and trying to do a little bit of everything. Um, so, um, you know, welcome to the stream. You know, uh, Caradron Overlords at 2,000 points versus a combined army of Slanesh and Nurgle. Um, at, uh, they're going to be bringing about 1,000 points each. Um, plus, uh, we have uh, some Gloom Spike Gits versus Allegiance of Nagash, and we have um, Flesh Eater Quartz versus Sylvaneth. Um, and you can hear probably how rowdy it is out there right now. So, uh, and I, I actually cannot uh, close the door currently because uh, I have too much junk in the way. But that said, I will be, uh, I'll probably be bringing the mic back and forth here and there just to. Um, just because I'll have to go out to the shop and do some uh, shop running stuff. Um, so, um, got some cool map stuff. Um, so, um, again, you know, let us know if you have any questions um, as we go. Uh, they're just getting everything set up, so I'm going to walk out and set the microphone out there really quick um, so that you all can, uh, uh, so you all can uh, get a taste of uh, how the game gets going, gets set up, and I'll come back and, and join you back in the booth in a little bit. All right. Thanks, everyone. I will go by first. <laughs> Things are going to start to shift. Three, four, all of that's in shift. So I have a squad of Arknots with, um, with these in each. And then the squad of Arknots with the miniguns are in there, as well as the rest of these guys are in there. And then they just apply on top. Uh, 13 or 14 wounds each, and 18 wounds. Once you get into combat with them, this one, this yeah. one's a bit better in com combat. Well, yeah, because it's the iron Those ones aren't. There's just a lot of wounds, but they get, but they get three attacks each. He gets like 2d6 plus five. But they're still like fours and fours. They have, they have shenanigans too. Yeah. If you surround it and bring it down, you screwed. <laughs> Works very similar to 40k because they can't get out anymore. That is all I wanted to hear. So this unit of 10 seekers can charge about 
average 34 inches in the first turn. For any turn, really. So I think we're just going to get one. <laughs> He's got to catch him. Ships are pretty fast, too. <laughs> also, I'm playing. Um, doesn't matter with him. He's going to deploy one. He's going to deploy one. He's going to deploy one. So I'm playing as Barrack for Bass. So I have. Uh, I'm going to get two artifacts instead of one. Alright. Five Blake Kings. It also gives you dwarves. Do you ever care allies? I lifted it up in front of me, I was like, oh. So that that comes from the cost of the character. He can the unit he can summon is up to two hundred. <coughs> he can basically summon. Well, if you want to get across back and just pull myself out, mine's not going to matter. Location is much. So we can take twenty ghouls. Three, Small ships are what? 14, big one is 18? Yeah, 14. Oh, one wound uh, apiece, other than the flying guys who have two. One wound, two, six. Okay, I have some characters who are going to be able to use you. Well, I'm going to use you. Well, if you want the characters, you can line up right in front of the points. I get some points for looking wounds, but don't kill the targets. Right, the depravity points. Yeah, so I need to hit multi wound things. So I don't want to be fighting those little one wound wounds. Well, it's not going to matter because they're in the ship right now, so. All that is out right now will be multi wound because the evocators are multi wound and the ships are multi wound. When does he get out of your boat? Out of the hero phase. Hero phase. Sorry, he's got to do it before you. I was gonna say when he feels threatened. That movie's on hearts. All right. Unless you're really worried about where he's going, you can go ahead as I deploy all thirty plague bearers. I'm on a boat. Got to put one boat over here. I'm on a boat. Six inches Take a good hard look. I'm on a boat. Nice. You guys should have like a cat and move chat. You and Josh and Dimitri. Both got your cats and play like cat pictures together. What? Because I'm a fan. He has a cat, but it's not alive. Wow. He just walks around and screams. Seriously, I play PlayStation sometimes with him. It's in the bathroom. <laughs> I still haven't heard it yet. Sitting on top of the stairs and just screams all the time. Normally I play and I just hear James chewing on a potato chip. Flash up. No, I have one. It's not all us at this point. Seriously, we'll be playing with two and a half hours. What's your threat range for? So this unit right here can charge average about 36 inches. Where are you coming? No, probably like 32. Okay. Enough. Uh, everyone else, pretty much the whole army, almost everyone can run in charge. Um, I think you can't run a charge, and the fiends can't run a charge, but everyone else can, pretty much. And then, and then they get... No, I didn't see the cat. Ridiculous move speeds. When you put it out, you keep track of anything that dies within 12. So yeah, you guys can just deploy everything else. You don't have to like take turns. Roll a dice for those, and on a 4-up I can do that. How fast are these things? Uh... 10 inch? Wait, one of them? I think this one's 8 inches and those are 10 inches. Okay, and I assume they have guns. Yeah, range. Uh, are you doing the 18? sky cannons and all of them? Yeah, I'm just doing the regular sky cannons. Um, so like 18, 18, 24. And then they have 12 inch guns as well. Okay, 12 inch guns are for each in turn 1, so... No, 12 inch guns are me. I'm going to grab uh, my charger at
It's going to be a clash, two family armies. Is that a spell? Is it a command ability? Is it once per game or? So, twelve. You end up placing right on the objective in front of one of them over there. Oh, that's so you're just doing it. I guess over there. Beans. Beans, beans, beans. Where do I want you boys? Oh, I'm going to go right through the gate. Yeah, we're going through there. <laughs> right now? Yeah. Like snowflakes. But these guys are buff. They're very chalky. Very. Uh, they, they can do a lot of work. They have one less. Yeah, they get bigger. They get very chalky. Well, go! That's what I'm hearing. <laughs> and the Nurgles are a hidden infestation. I'm a good, I'm a nice guy what? The Nurgles are a hidden infestation. What does that mean? Um, during my first movement phase, they have to pop up in cover more than nine inches from the enemy anywhere on the battlefield. All oh, those things. Yeah. That's the anything else being with the wood. The ones that get to sit there and mock you and call you names. Maybe fling poop. And that's about it. As am I. So you have first turn, finish well, you have choice of first turn. <laughs> so they charge thirty six? They they charge you. So their their base move is sixteen. Uh, they run 2d6 instead of 1d6, and plus, they can run a charge. plus 1 if there's a hero nearby. They charge 2d6 plus 1 if there's a hero nearby, and they can run a charge. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Maximum, I think I can actually charge off the other side of the board, but I'd have to roll double sixes. But that's the only thing that you have that would probably make it this turn? Um... Feasibly? Probably. Okay. Unless you're like really lucky. Uh, I'd have to roll pretty high. I mean, they're like base move 14. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, Chariot. Yeah, it's going to be base move 14. Yeah, plus those guys have to move around the building, so that kind of so scampers them. So. 14, right. average charge of 7 is 21, so yeah, I'd have to get a little lucky, but I could I could theoretically reach that on turn 1. Okay. I'll give you guys a, a decent charge roll. Good luck. All right. Good luck. Good luck, partner. Good luck. <laughs> Made the best demons win. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> I feel like... Uh, At least we're not demons that have animosity to each other. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right. Uh, I have an infernal rapture, so I get one. I feel like all points. the shooting I have, it's like first turn. Uh, do you have any hero phase stuff? Is it do? really that good for yes. me? Yes. And then I get we get a command point. Right? We get a command point. So we're at two command points now. Yeah, you're at two. Because we get one for where we are fighting on the map. Yeah. All right. We're at two command points. Yeah, I have a. I have a. I, no, I all right, then I will just keep track of my summoning points with the big white guy. Um, <laughs> my contagion points. <laughs> Um, I get three for being on, I get three for each side of the board, and if the enemy is not on the same side of the board with me, I get an additional one to that. So, I'm only on this side, and you're not on this side, so I start with four. Sure. Seven. <laughs> Which, if you start with a tree, you essentially get really close. Because the tree, I think, gives you two a turn. I think you get D3. <laughs> Maybe it's D3. Yeah, I've watched a few battle reports of... Uh, I don't have trees yet, so I haven't really studied their rules. I've watched, like, <coughs> seven um, battle reports in a row of, like, a guy playing Nurgle. Because so, it's Maggie King, right? Yeah, it's Maggie King. Um... Yeah, it was one of the guys from Any Wargaming, it's like him learning Nurgle. 
since I was like just seven episodes in a row. Where did I put So yeah, you also find out where you're at on that like little like circle thing, yep. right? So I was going through, I was looking at the spells, but um, we're going to start on six. Okay. Hero phase, pick D3, different enemy units, excluding Nurgle units within 12 inches of each other, each unit suffers D3. So I'm going to guess the point here will hit all three of those for... Wait, what's that? At starting hero phase, pick D3 different enemy units, excluding Nurgle units, within 12 inches of each other, each unit suffers D3 mortal wounds. Okay. Are those... So, I mean, if you pick that unit, then yeah, those right. all three are within 12 inches of each other. So, Frigate will take two mortal wounds. Because, yeah, he's within 12 of him. So, Frigate takes two mortal wounds. Two. Uh, Evocators will take two mortal wounds. And the Ironclad will take two mortal wounds. Roll the four three times in a row. And then, at the end of the game, what holds the most? Uh, that's a below average. At any point, you hold all four. <laughs> Two inches below average. And he's going to do Mystic Shield on the uh, Blake King. Yeah, hey, is the game like five or six? Five. Five. Uh, fiends. <laughs> <laughs> As they specify your game. <laughs> <laughs> is the game? I mean, is it five turn? or six turns? Well, yeah. Five. Five. Weird. All right. Um, let go or you? All right. Yeah. Um, do you have anyone that can dispel? Right. He's gonna do plus All right. Not, are you? Is that over them? Yeah. <laughs> right there is at their edge. Okay. So yeah, you got it. No. So I just rolled a six for Mystic Shield. Yeah, you got it. Alright. That is my hero phase. Um, running these guys. They're off to a solid start. And I don't know if you want your character to go through before I didn't realize one is there. Before I move. Well, as long as there's a little bit of space for me to squeak in there somewhere. Uh, the, that character cannot... The characters can't run a charge, just the units. So I'm not worried about getting her in. Just turn. Yeah, I mean, I have a couple ways to bring Well, to heal and to bring the brain back. Yeah, you know, like random. Some of them are small bases. Some of them are larger. Already started battle. The small ones used to be th is are the old size actually, uh, okay. and I've just never rebased them. Oh, Grady! Uh, goodness, a lot's going on, um, and I'm sure. Things will continue to all night long just go nuts. Um, thanks for thanks for hanging out and uh, tuning in. So we have our uh, it looks like our demons. Um, if you can see um, on the top of your screen, the demons had set up with the Slanesh on the top left and the Nurgle on the top right, um, and they just have plowed forward the. Um, Demonettes, I believe those are uh, uh, Seekers. Um, and then there's that super lawnmower chariot. They're just fast and they're blazing up towards the Caradron overlords. Um, I don't know, I, and I do worry that the Caradron's um, firepower will not come to bear um, with the Slanesh because it's so quick. Um, and um, so in addition... Um, we are, um, in addition, I can see that that big gigantic blob of Nurgle, like they've already like sat on top of one objective and, you know, it's just, they're going to be immovable. Uh, it might actually be behoove the, um, the Caradron player to kind of shift to the right and try to move up that flank. Um, oh, watch out for the Paul. 
Um, so, um, the Stormcast player also has some uh, ca some Stormcast. You can see them directly in front of the uh, the center um, in the their five uh, evocators, uh, and they are um, having a lot of fun. They are probably going to get targeted pretty quickly and eliminated for their mortal wound output. Um, that said, who? <clears throat> we have a few more weeks of our campaign left. The um, Isles of uh, uh, Argentinium in the Realm of Metal. You, people have a, a lot of different sizes of uh, armies they're bringing. So there are a couple thousand point games out there. 2,000 points, 1,500 points. So there's a lot, uh, a lot of stuff going on. So we are planning um, to affiliate our channel uh, soon, and um, so what the plan is effectively to um, affiliate, uh, we'll put up a couple cool emojis, like a little bolt hole button, um, or not emojis, uh, emoticon, um, emotes, or whatever they're called. So we're planning on doing that, um, and you know, trying to have some fun. Um, Um, so we're just poking away, doing a few things. Um, I don't know if uh, f I've been. Um, I don't know if folks have noticed. There's a um, if you're paying attention to the Games Workshop release, but we got like heavy duty chaos, um, uh, heavy heavy duty chaos, and then we went straight to um, just one release, which was the Lord Discordant. So very very interesting how. Um, how quickly we went from um, um, how we went from like five releases on that like we had an Abaddon, we had the Codex, we had um, data cards, we had like all this stuff, and then you know new space chaos space marines, and then we went to um, and then we went to just the Lord Discordant uh, after a couple of weeks, so. Um, pretty crazy. And in fact, that's what I'm doing now is uh, trying to, to organize my order for next week as well as uh, taking care of the Twitch channel. So we can see those those <laughs> seekers are already um, like right up in there, right up in the, the face of that they're just going to tear that ship right out of the sky. Um, I think this might be um, an overly... Um, I, I, this might not be a, the greatest matchup for the Caradron uh, overlords, but um, I, I feel a little bit bad for they have... Um, th they are just uh, easily... Um, I feel like a lot of the older armies that did not that haven't gotten the updated um whatever the their version of endless spells whether it's endless um uh and um endless oh really well, that's funny um with the uh endless uh whether it's endless spells or the uh like the end endless judgments or um, uh, any of those, uh, like, Caradrons don't have them, they don't have the, like, updated synergies. Um, I feel like Caradrons, Fire Slayers, Sylvanath, those are armies that could all use a little tweak. Um, you know, we, uh, kind of how Flesh Eater Quartz and Corn just kind of got their little tweak, so it would be great to see... Um, so, I think that, um, you know, all of those armies could use a little tweak, whereas Nurgle is very strong, and it looks like Demonettes are going to be pretty good, and they're about to get whatever it is uh, going for them, so. Um, 
Um, There we go. So lots, just trying to multitask and do a ton of stuff at once. All right, so here we go. Back to where we are. Um, the, um, yeah, uh, it looks like, um, did Slanesh leave that objective um, uh, in the back? Um, so there's, if you look to, right next to that dice tray, there's a big orange, uh, like in the middle of the lava, there is the second objective. Uh, it looks like it has a number two on it. Um, and it looks like I can't see anyone around that. So we'll see. Um, and the... I th you know, um, it'll be interesting because at the end of turn three, um, third battle round, one player immediately wins if they have control of all four objectives. So I imagine that the demon players are going quickly for that to eliminate and control objectives quick. And you can see there is some Nurgle on the uh, on the castle, uh, one of the castle ramparts uh, that looked like they just kind of jumped down, and then um, that blob of Nurgle is just going to move forward, move forward, and there's a gigantic, great, unclean one right there on the top right of the screen. And uh, if he gets, if he waddles his his stinky bum into battle, it's going to be a mess for uh, for the overlords. Right. Um, but we'll see what happens if these, um, uh, if the mortal wound output of the uh, evocators can can really support uh, the Caradrons um, and and the guns and the uh, of the Caradron overlords to see if they can kind of get things moving. Now we um. So uh, the other battles that are happening tonight, we have uh, um, Flesh Eater Courts um, versus um, Sylvaneth. Uh, again, a, a new um, updated uh, Codex, uh, not Codex, Battle Tome, uh, going up against somebody. Uh, Sylvaneth could definitely use some tweaks to kind of increase their uh, just their overall success. I mean, they just don't have the same synergies as other uh, armies out there. And then we have uh, another death, which is um, uh, Legions of Nagash versus uh, Gloomspite Gets. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a quick walk, grab a bottle of water, and um, go see how those games are going, and I'll come back and I'll give you a little report on uh, on how the other games are, are moving along. Alrighty, be right back. Thank <laughs> you. 
All right, so, woo, um, now we have, um, we have um, nothing much happening in any of our other games, strangely enough. Um, oh, fun fact, let me tell a quick little story. Uh, we, uh, we got this old cooler um, uh, when we first were opening from this place up in, I want to say Hubbardston, and I hauled my car, you know, an hour and a half north. Um, in Massachusetts, got a cooler from an, a closed down old ice cream shop, and then I hauled it all the way down to the bottom of Massachusetts, um, almost to Rhode Island, and I, uh, and it was an old Snapple cooler, uh, but it was a good size and it held a lot of stuff, so we, we filled it up, um, and a, about three weeks ago, the compressor, and we're assuming it's a compressor, uh, we didn't have someone formally look at it because it would have cost so much and basically what everyone was telling us over the phone was probably a compressor so we um, started looking into other uh, other coolers and we tracked some down at um, Best Buy they had really kind of the best prices um, for the size cooler we were looking for and so I drove there's only one in the state, and I thought that if I just drove over to Dorchester, I'd pick it up and bring it back, we would be all set. Well, unfortunately, I got up there, they loaded it into my car, I got back to the shop, and when I unloaded it, it totally, um, it was totally broken. Um, the glass was like sh all over the place. Um, so, I had to drive it back 
to Dorchester, and from where we are located, uh, driving into the city, right on the edge of the city, is basically an hour. So I had uh, three plus hours invested in this uh, cooler that was broken, and then they ended up just shipping it to us anyway. Um, but now, we finally got it all back this week, hooked up, so we have nice cold, we're not like pulling it out of a an ice, like a like a camping cooler or you know a backyard cooler so we actually have our cooler back for our water and our sodas again which is uh, outstanding and because it's new it's like going to be super energy efficient so I'm very excited about it ah. so now let's take a look here um, looks the caradrons are moving up um, behind the storm casts um, on the bottom I'm guessing that he's going to just try to like throw mortal wounds and just take out as mon many of those um, plague bearers as possible. He probably needs to worry a little bit about that um, the the Slanesh super lawnmower. Ah, and as I speak, he's clearly moving to intercept that. Oh, so there it is. Um, yeah, okay, so that's called the um, Exalted Seeker Chariot. Um, and they're probably going to try to do as much to that as possible. I would not imagine that's going to be good to move into their lines. Um, and Jared, the guy playing, is uh, uh, he said that that is a bear to put together. It literally hangs off the base um, on every side. Um, and if you don't uh, assemble the, uh, put in the spacers correct, the tails of the, the tails of the, um, uh, the tails of the seekers, the, the little uh, seeker tails end up getting all mixed up in with all the blades and it just doesn't sit right with the things pulling it. So you have to be careful and make sure you're like using the spacers correctly. I actually, um, I actually uh, spent uh, some time. I'm assembling a bloodthirster for one uh, one of the one of the guys that comes into the store, uh, and uh, it, it does it. Uh, the some, the model goes together really amazingly, but there are a lot of little fiddly bits. Like the blood the bloodthirster has a um, in the, with these demon models. The bloodthirster has an individual tongue uh, for the head, so the head comes t together in two parts and has a tongue. Uh, and that was actually quite a bear uh, to get together correctly, uh, but it's good. Um, uh, anyone out there uh, doing any sort of painting or assembly out there tonight? Just listening to me uh, chatter on my chatterbox ness? No? Um, well, if you are, post up what you have. Um, we are happy to uh, happy to, to to chat about hobby while uh, we're watching this game unfold. Yeah, we actually have um, a new a new setup um, on a, our camera, our, our top-down camera, uh, so it's not uh, so we don't have to worry about bumping the bars that we're holding it up. So it's just hanging straight down from the ceiling, uh, so it shouldn't get shaken or bumped, um, which has happened in the past. So. Um, in the side view, let's uh, let's actually just grab that side view, um, and uh, um, and let me grab this side view. I'm just gonna blow it up big for a hot minute. Um, like you can just see how like there are all these different. Uh, this just this battlefield from the side view is amazing. Um, and um, so if you look closely, you can see that they're actually, I, I used eight of the towers uh, so that you can, uh, so, you know, it's functionally, 
um, you know, functionally you're looking at a, you know, the, the, the eight-pointed star of chaos, right, uh, which I think is, you know, I thought myself very clever, of course, um, <laughs> but, you know, that's the way of the, that's the way of the world, but you get a really good look at this, this terrain. A few of the guys painted this up over a few months, uh, a few years ago, when it first came out, and it's just so amazing. Um, although people do have to be careful because one, this plastic, uh, the glue didn't is kind of tricky with this, but also it's very pointy, and, and people poke themselves all the time with the spikes everywhere. So here we go back to um, the top view. Oh, we can, uh, I can overhear, I don't know if you can, uh, people arguing about uh, Avengers, um, an upcoming Avengers movies um, with, uh, um, I'm not sure, I haven't seen Captain Marvel yet, I'm not sure if I will um, see it before, uh, while it's in the cinema, and I'm unlikely, I, I can't tell you, we, it's very difficult to find time to go to the actual cinema um, to watch a movie these days, but might be something I look into when, um, when, uh, uh, the, you know, um, end game comes out because I really do want to see that. So Nate has definitely lost a chunk of those, uh, or like a handful of those, and Nurgle, uh, plague bearers. Uh, so let's see what's, uh, how are things going. Yeah, the next step is to get a smaller camera, um, and, uh, one more camera and aim it into a little dice tray. Um, but that'll be something that'll be we will we'll, we'll get to in time. Um, we we do plan to affiliate, as I said, um, cut this um you know things to work through uh, on the Twitch channel. Um, we have enough followers. Uh, we have enough uh, various things, uh, all the basic requirements. Uh, but there are still a few things to you have to do before you officially sign up. But we want to because um, I, there's some. Thing, uh, on Twitch about uh, um, um, yeah so so we if you, you can, if you upload a video um, you'll only be able to do that once you become an affiliate um, so we typically automatically upload after we uh, we typically automatically upload after we do a, go live um, but apparently that will stop once uh, once well, on Wednesday of next week. So we are hoping to uh, we're hoping to, to get that done. So and then we'll make some cool emojis. Probably make a um, um, a couple different emojis um, or emotes or um, whatever they're called. Um, probably one of them being our logo and, and various other things. Um, but so. And it looks like um, the Karajan are targeting some of those uh, Slanesh units now.
All right, I'm going to take a quick walk out there um, just to do another double check on the different battles going on, um, and I'll come back and report on, on what's happening. Alright, here we go. Woof. Alright, so now um, the uh, 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 we go over to the uh, Gloom Spite, which is uh, our, the army is all trolls. So it's two uh, dank um, uh, uh, dank Holt Trogoths and three units of three of the um, no, they just the the uh, stone the the new stone um, trogoths, and uh, they threw a whole bunch of rocks and killed a whole bunch of skeletons, and then all the skeletons just got reanimated. And the other uh, battle is a tree lord currently fighting a whole bunch of ghouls. Um, uh, so the wounded um, the wounded tree lord has chopped down um, a flesh eater quartz. Uh, leader, so ooh, look at that, charging into that Slanesh um, uh, exalted chariot that's pretty big because the truth is um, I you wouldn't want to get charged by that that chariot um, and then we get to um, up on the top of that castle on the right um, you see the uh, those three bases are three bases of Nurglings so um, annoying and uh, um, potentially, you know, if they if you let allow them to sneak up, um, they can grab an objective. But they're nurgling, so you kind of want to ignore them until they're like, oh, I now I have to focus fire on them. So really, you got to figure out when are you going to, you know, start treating them as a threat, and when are you going to ignore the plucky little, um, little pus bombs. Um, so, let's see here. I'm gonna go uh, touch that camera up a little bit. Maybe we can get a better look at those nerglings. But... Oh, there we go. Let's uh, let's let's take a look at that. 
Um, let's take a look at that one more time here. Gold. Yeah, there we go. See those nurglings. See the uh, great unclean one. Um, the advance of the uh, Caradron and the Avocators, the ship that's moving. And this um, and this battle mat is just gorgeous to look at. On the you know, just looks so like glowy um, and uh, and neat. So it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Um, so um, pretty cool stuff. The great unclean one. Uh, you can see um, see in the distance those. Uh, those uh, 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 seekers um, are surrounding that ship over there. Probably going to try to take it out. <laughs> All right, boom. Back we are. All right, and then in making sure he stays uh, outside of range of those other Caradron uh, models. Clumsy. Fat fingers. So, oh hi. Oh, what you doing? I'm just gonna get water, but I wanna say hi. Oh hi. Hi. What are you um? Are you uh, painting today? Yeah, I'm just gonna do some hobbying because I already got my game in for the week on Wednesday. Yeah, there's a there's a ton of uh there's a ton of hobby. Like th there are like what six people out there hobbying today? Yeah, there's a lot of people. So we roll. Say hello. So, um, yeah, there's a ton of people just like hobbying today, which is great. You know, a lot of uh, a lot of action out there in the uh, in the painting tables. Uh, yes, so indeed. we got a lot, of some several games, some some painting and modeling. What uh, what unit are you working on? I've got my flamers, my screamers, and my gaunt summoner. Oh, very exciting! Is that the gaunt summoner on the disc or just the regular? Just guy? the regular. Ah, very mm -hmm. exciting. I love that model. Yeah, but, he's cool. He's got like those like stalks for eyes. Yeah. Like a snail almost. That's yeah, weird. I like yeah. snails. <laughs> uh, the, it reminds me a lot of that creepy movie monster. Um, uh, and I can't remember what movie it was with like the girl that like went between the worlds. It was so creepy. And there was this monster and he ate the fairies. Oh, cool. It was like so disturbing because I thought it was kind of like a, a kid's tale, but it was definitely not. It was like a terrible, terrible story and very <laughs> dark. Um, and I, I wish I could remember what the movie was. But in a way, I'm glad I don't know what it was because there was a monster and he had like eyeballs in his like palms. Oh, oh, oh. Um, Is it not... Not Pan's Labyrinth. Yes, yes it is. Yes, it is Pan's so Labyrinth. I thought Pan's he didn't Labyrinth. He eyeballs in his hands. <laughs> I thought Pan's Labyrinth was like, like a. It was going to be like a fairy tale. <laughs> oh gosh, no. And I watched it, and I was horrified. It's horrifying. <laughs> it was so dark and so scary, and like the monster thing was like, and the poor fairies, and like, you didn't really like it was. It, I don't know that it had a happy ending. I, I don't know that it had a happy ending at all. Left me with scars. Yeah. <laughs> well, all right. I'm going to get my water. And yes. I stole all your paintbrushes. Perfect. Great. Cool. <laughs> That's my man. You're most welcome. So, yeah. So, um, just because it doesn't say um, Hobby Night on the on the 
calendar, it doesn't mean you can't come down and hobby. A lot of people come down and, and uh, build and hobby just to hang out and chat with folks. So, oh, looks like this, the, there is finally a destroyed uh, Karajan ship. And if the... And it is... I'm going to... Um, hey, Nate, did we move on to turn two yet? No. So... Oh, okay. I thought with that Karajan ship being blown to bits, dragged down to the... Yes. Oh, and it looks like the Karajans are getting struck back um, from the Exalted Chariot as well. Oof. But... Yeah, it does look as though the... Uh, it does look as though the the Karajans were not able to do as much to that uh, chariot as they had hoped, but maybe it'll keep it back there a turn, which would be huge. Um, but the, the, the Seekers down on the bottom left have some big decisions. They have to make some, some choices as to whether they're going to go and try to take down that other ship, or if they're going to go and take down those uh, overlords, the probably the Arcanaut company down in the bottom left. So they have some choices to make. Um, and, you know, the Nurgle lost, uh, uh, what well, looks like they lost seven models of the, uh, from their horde of plague bearers. So that's also going to be something. Um, are they going to just keep pushing down? I think it might be able to get a charge off towards those Stormcast, but that's still... Um, I, Oh, and uh oh, looks like uh the looks like those overlords that charged that chariot just got grounded to dust, so it's not going to be able to hold them there. So, and we're just doing some battle shock. All right, so there we go. So, so we have some morale, um, a battle shock phase happening, and now I think we'll move on and we'll move over to we'll uh, we'll move over to battleground two. Not eight. All right, so. And it looks as if, uh, The, um, so, uh, Chaos took the, uh, round two, so they are, uh, they, they won initiative and they're getting ready to start their movement to keep, uh, to move things forward. Yeah. Uh, what, uh, so, um, everyone out there in, uh, in, uh, Twitch land, hey, how's it going? Um, what is, what is, uh, what's your, some of your favorite, um, new, uh, lore? Uh, what's your favorite new fluff happening in the uh, the, the Age of Sigmar? Um, now, there are a few things that I really kind of enjoyed. Um, 
the founding of the new free cities uh, has me interested. Um, definitely um, the idea of the kind of uh, the the idea behind what the free people will become, like the uh, the fortresses, the the gear fortresses, like something like that. I've been dreaming of like night legs and a like castle, like you know, wandering about doing uh, patrols, um, things like. Um, Things like uh, the the realm of fire, right? Where they like have finally like given you some artwork for. Uh, I mean, look at that! Like some cool artwork for realm of fire humans, um, and I just uh, um, I've loved what they've done with the realm of life, um, and uh, just some cool stuff. Um, but I guess I really enjoy the the fact that the realm of uh, the how the realm of del death got uh, kind of re-centralized where the uh, the magic is all in the center of the realm and not on the edges uh, and I, I find that really cool and interesting um, because the uh, it sort of like creates this like you know so people live on the outskirts and I've and I wanted, I created um, some free guild uh, based on like humans in the realm of death, which I thought would be super cool. And I, I think that, and they so they have the, the like banners with a symbol of Shyash on it. They're like lots of bone and, and amethyst colors. Um, but I also, when, uh, you know, the Necroquake kind of shook free some of the underworlds and allowed people to, uh, and allowed. Um, and allowed people to, uh, like, souls from the old world to kind of escape. And, like, um, you know, there are all these characters from the old world that, uh, you know, like, that Nagesh has been holding onto their souls, and now they're kind of, were, were freed, and Sigmar was able to take some of them and move them back to, uh, and was able to move them back into... Uh, storm casts or, or their souls were free to kind of you know do uh, do what whatever they were able to do um, but you know I, I also really enjoy what they've done with the mortal realms and just like how they're effectively they're still mostly taken over by chaos um, outside of the free cities I think that's pretty fabulous the the fact that the free cities are, um, quite functionally, like the cities are these bastions of, of like hope. In uh, but, um, but there, there's still so many. Uh, but there's still so many, uh, like areas of just chaos, and they're, they, you know, they're the free cities are functionally fighting uh, every every minute against um, they're fighting every minute against the uh, against the tide of like chaos and beasts and you know right um, but there are a few things that I find really neat um, so if you've ever listened to the the uh, uh, Age of Sigmar podcast uh, uh, from Warhammer itself uh, they uh, they had a lot of great conversations about the designing of the the um, elf uh, armies they have uh, re they, they wanted to create models where the like they're kind of all on the same level so you have Marathi you have um um, Alariel, um, and you have uh, the floaty sea guy um, with, uh, flying on the wave, and they actually all their heads are on the same level, uh, which is fascinating. I'm really interested in to see what happens when we see we finally see the, a Malarian model, and it'd be awesome to see that soon. Uh, but who knows if we will? Uh, pretty cool stuff. So as you can see, back to the battle. 
Jared has moved all of his Slanesh, uh, all of his Slanesh units. He's totally committing uh, to uh, engaging uh, and uh, engaging and, and uh, attacking the Caradrons from uh, like right away. Oh yeah, uh, is it almost time? Yeah, sure. Um, so we might take a, I might take a quick little break, uh, do a little, uh, we do, um, on, uh, Friday nights, we do a, a, a prize giveaway, uh, where, you know, if you wish, optional, you can pay in $5, uh, and then at the end, we draw a ticket, um, and we, uh, you know, that one person gets that in the store credit. So, um, that's, uh, super huge right now if you are a, uh, chaos player because you're just, uh, you're just getting all kinds of demon engines and amazing stuff. So that's something to keep an eye on. Um, so um, anyway, <clears throat> I am going to go uh, uh, go take care of that uh, little prize giveaway action, and then uh, we'll be right back, and we'll uh, keep watching and, and finish off this battle.
order to sign up for it, um, I have my account for you. Um, additionally, I don't know if you're interested in it, we do, now that it's April is here, uh, we have a fancy holder this year for Dungeons and Dragons. So if any of you do purchase, any of you is entered in a free, and it goes on special beholder model. Um, Warren Spark is coming for Magic, so let, let us know which is yours, what you're looking for, um, so we can help you get it. Uh, we've already sold a ton of uh, pre-release stuff, so um, so if you're looking for that, make sure you sign up quick because um, it could be it could disappear. Um, if uh, Warhammer Shadow Spear is sold out, um, and so it, it, they'll restock it, but I'm not sure when um, or when I'll get it back. How about next week, right? It's just demons shit, all demons of each one of us. Have I? Yeah. I think it'd be cool. Huh? It's my smallest of my demon factions. I have 20, one of the regular or pink horrors, yeah. and I think like five things. I ordered like, I, I, I bought some stuff last year, I just ordered the rest of it. It's not actually right. Not, not but I think it'd be fun to try to change those, so we're going to way that stuff. That's the seen that's the one where you can swap positions. I did that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fun to try. I played that a number of times against uh, some of these run that against me a number of times. Oh, you tried it? Yeah. So it's like you're, you're fighting one and it's like the switch is like, oh, he's down to five. We're just switching out. It's kind of it's cool. It's like, come back here. It's kind of cool because the only problem I've seen is like, there's nothing like really punchy it looks like. It's actually just kind of I mean, they're magic. They're not, yeah, right. they're not combat. You so just can't think combat. Right, right, yeah. I was like, how does this already work? They do decent shooting and lots of magic. A lot of wizards. A lot of wizards. Literally every single unit. <laughs> 
I think the flamers are the only thing not, and they're loose to the extreme shooters. <laughs> yeah, because then the screamers, right? Sorry, we really probably love you. Yeah. <laughs> Jerry, I was going to ask you, do you want to come over for Thrones when it premieres? Like next Sunday? Yeah, Okay, here I am back from Twitch land. Hey, um, so we did our uh, our, our drawing. We've uh, sold uh, some uh, super magical um, uh, we, some super magical um, what uh, what my brain just shut down um, Necromunda. Um, we just had some super Necromunda stuff going on um, over the weekend. Super duper is great, um, and we're doing. People are talking Blood Bowl because we're doing Blood Bowl on Wednesdays. I'm hoping to. I'm hoping very much to get us um, to uh, streaming a, a Blood Bowl game on Wednesday. That'd be super cool. Um, uh, so we'll kick off some Blood Bowl this week. It'll be super epic. Um, and, uh, you know, just uh, I don't know how many people will show up. It'll be great. Um, so, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so uh, we look. Slanesh has definitely abandoned his uh, um, objective. Uh, but he's down getting ready to do a whole bunch on the other side of the board. So, um, and the interesting part about that is at the end of turn three, if they're holding all the objectives, they just win. But if they are not holding that one objective because Slanesh took off and left it, that's bad. <laughs> so, um, and the Nurgle is just too slow to get over there to grab it. Um, and 
Um, I'm not sure about you, but I don't see where the great unclean one went. So uh, give me a moment. Okay, so it, um, let's see, I'm going to try to, uh, yeah, so we can't actually see the great unclean one because um, it's actually hiding behind, uh, the great unclean one is actually um, hiding behind the gigantic tower over on the side getting ready to go for that ship. So, um, so the, uh, that, um, so that great unclean one is going off to the big ship. Now, he's super sneaky, clearly, because we can't see him from the camera, but he's behind the gigantic super tower, um, which is actually pretty amazing. All right. Now, thanks for uh, bearing with us as we uh, we uh, took our little break. Um, it looks like so the Nurglings have still moved up there on the top of that tow that rampart. Um, so the Slanesh has abandoned their objective back in the top left, uh, and the the Seekers have charged into uh, they've charged into the uh, uh, the the Arcanaut Company in the bottom left corner. So there's a lot of, of charging that's going to happen. Now. I really enjoy, um, I, I really enjoy looking through the core rule book for, um, for Age of Sigmar. I just think it gives you so much cool stuff. Um, just, like just so much neat, um, you know, so many neat images of, of what is going on, you know, just like with different folks and different uh, people and different. Oh, I'm always hungry. What is that? I'm hungry, roast beef. Oh, I'm all I'm all set. I sure. Yeah, I'm I, I I'm not. I'm not. Uh, yeah, like yeah, roast beef hungry. <laughs> so um, so this model right here, like like a human in the realm of death. Kind of, ugh, just so cool. I'm really interested to see what happens with the humans um, for Age of Sigmar. I think that that is going to be. Oh, here's some. Looks like the Nurgles. Looks like the Nurglings. Looks like Nurgle. Um, the plague bearers are all charging in. So this could. Um, oh gosh, yeah. This could get. Everything seems to have made a charge. So this could end up being over pretty quickly. Um, so realm of metal which is kind of where we're fighting right now it's really interesting um, um, but also like just look at um, look at that, that human that free guild um, guy realm of death like so neat and cool uh, you know so neat um and it's also, you know, uh, Warcry is coming, uh, and that just seems really cool. Um, and and it, uh, just super cool. Um, so, we, so let's uh, just, while we're watching the Caradrons get slaughtered here, um, so we have, like, when we're, we're, we're looking at... Uh, the different races. So you have Stormcast, and they are kind of the chosen race currently. Um, they are getting all the love. There's lots of models, lots of different, you know, they've had several updates. Um, and then you have Fire Slayers. We know Fire Slayers are getting an update. Um, prob they'll probably get a, tr they, we know they're getting a, a, a train piece for the tabletop, and we know they're getting their the, kind of the endless treatment. 
it'll be interesting to see if they update some of the synergies um, or if they add any unique heroes or characters. I don't know if they need to do that or if they will. Now, the Caradrons also need some sort of... Um, they need some sort of update um, with something. With They need the Endless Treatment and some sort of... Um, uh, and some sort of terrain piece. Plus, I think they really need some, uh, like, a couple other characters, a couple of, like, some other synergies. Um, Sylvaneth definitely needs some sort of treatment uh, to kind of bring them on par. Um, Daughters of Cain. Um, now, they, the Daughters of Cain arrived before we had endless spells. So, um... You know, they could definitely use the, the Endless Spell Treatment. Um, and the, uh, the Deep can also arrive before the Endless Spells. Um, Seraphon are totally, a, a totally um, existing, you know, army. They, they exist as they are. They're not probably not going to get much love unless we get a Blood Bowl team eventually. But that said, um, they could use the endless treatment right with the terrain piece um and then you get to the free peoples and and the free peoples just include such a swath of um so you have um the dispossessed um right um which are the dispossessed which are the old dwarves you have the devoted of sigmar which are the fanatics and uh the priests um, you have Free Guild, which is just the general human soldier. The Ironweld Arsenal, which is all of the, like, kind of mechanical things, like gears and cannons. And you have the Wizards from the College uh, uh, Collegiate Arcane. The Eldritch Council, um, which are, like, just uh, the... Uh, Right, sword masters, right? You have the Phoenix Temple, Lion Rangers, Draconis, Swift Hawk Agents, Scourge Privateers, Darkling Covered, Shadow Blades, Wanderers, Order Serpentis. I mean, that, all of those need to be combined and uh, rebranded and brought into the current age, right? Um, they really do. And then, um, right, and then we have Chaos, um, and so we have the Ever Chosen, right, and, uh, um, so the Varen Guard, um, right, so it's in, I, I just, the Varen Guard are, like, his chosen, um, sort of lieutenants of the Apocalypse, so to speak, but he, um, but more than that, um, right, the Varen Spire is what the folks from Warcry will be climbing, right? So you have Slaves to Darkness, you know, we're, we're, people are hoping, because we've seen a couple of the um, Dark Oath models, that uh, Slaves of Darkness kind of uh, gets what, uh, they're the last of the, um, they're, uh, Slaves of Darkness is effectively the last of the um, uh, the last of the four major um, malign portents models to get kind of the update because you got Night Haunt, you got the Stormcast uh, Eternal update, and you got um, uh, and you got Goblin update, and so then the, you had the War Queen, but that army has not received an update. Great right, corn has been updated and is definitely ready to go. Zinch is updated. Nurgle is updated. Actually, Zinch is updated, but it definitely needs some endless spells. And now we've seen the Slanesh um, is coming. Um, the Hedonites of Slanesh is coming. We have new great. Um, we have a new greater demon. Um, Skaven has gotten their update. Um, and then you have creatures of chaos, Bray herds. Um, those have been updated, right? Um, there's like a ton, a ton of awesome stuff that has been kind of taken care of um, with uh, all of the. So, 
All right, and then you have forces of death. All right, so your vampires need something. I mean, Night Hunt has what they need. Flesh Eater courts have been updated. But vampires, right, they need something. Um, and the Morgasts need something. Um, and then destruction, Iron Jaws, right? Oh man, Iron Jaws. They need they need something to bring them in line with the, the current where where they are, uh, where we are with Age of Sigmar. Bone Splitters. Imagine what the endless spells would be for Bone Splitters. So cool. Um, same with Beast Claw Riders. Um, and and we know that goblins and gl the Gloom Spites have been updated. Um, and. Right, and then fire and thunder, right? So this is just the battles. But, like, just looking through this is just so... It's such a great book. Um, it's just so it's so rich in background. And, and they're basically creating... Um, they're basically creating um, the history of the mortal realms each time a book gets released. Um, and so and then they add time span and time span so there's a lot of great stuff uh, that we can do in fact um once may comes and we're doing um once may arrives and we are um uh, once may arrives and we're doing 40k again on friday nights on the stream on saturdays we'll probably do some age of sigmar skirmish things like that that will um help uh will help us uh um uh, Age of Sigmar skirmish and that stuff will help us. Uh, do, do, I think we'll do fun stuff like hunt down endless spells and try to dispel them, things like that. Fun stuff like that. So, all right, I'm gonna go check on a couple battles. I'll be right back.
All right, so I think we can safely assume that uh, we can safely assume that uh, as the battles across the um, across the store are finishing up, the um, trolls uh, have had a really rough time um, killing skeletons. They knock them down and they get back up again. Um, but while they've destroyed the leader, there don't look like there are enough trolls left. Um, there are two dank hold trogoths, but there aren't enough uh, basic trolls left to really do enough damage to shake the um, to shake the legions away. Um, and then the flesh eater courts have gobbled up all the trees. Uh, there are a handful of dryads left, and uh, uh, and that's about it. Um, they'll have some good firewood for a feast later. And um, as you're looking down. The, on the right of the screen, you can see that uh, the Great Unclean One got into combat with a ship, uh, and it's likely not long for this world. Um, and then if you look in the center of the battlefield, um, the, a big, big bloody mix of Nurgle and Slanesh are ch getting ready to chop down the last of the um, Karajan. So, if we... So it looks like death and chaos are going to be overwhelming victors today when order, um, uh, the forces of order, need like basically an army of stormcasts to, to help them uh, turn the tide. So such is the way. Any questions out there uh, in Twitch land? Any, uh, anyone working on any models? Anyone doing anything uh, super cool tonight uh, out there in the world of Twitch? Um, if you haven't already, uh, you should check out, uh, we posted up on Wednesday with a White Dwarf review. This month's White Dwarf is pretty awesome. Um, next month, um, we'll include updates to the uh, uh, index, uh, Xenos index for um, those uh, pesky, uh, uh, um, pesky uh, el elven stuff. Uh, uh, they'll have the pesky, uh, how do you say, um, they get the, the silly old uh, update to the um, Eldari with, uh, oh gosh, I can't even um, think about them. The uh, Yanari, there we go. So the Yanari will get an update in the White Dwarf. So. We'll maybe see a whole bunch of, of those some combined uh, elf, uh, el el Eldari forces. Um, it would be interesting um, if they... I, I do wonder if Games Workshop has a plan to ever get back to um, the Aspects uh, and the Aspect Warriors. Oh, so this, the fumes, yeah. We, uh, 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 the super glue fumes are terrible. Yeah, a buddy of mine actually, uh, <laughs> a buddy of mine's wife doesn't actually let him assemble uh, in the house. He actually comes to the shop and uh, and paints and assembles in the shop because uh, his wife won't let him do his gluing at home because it stinks so bad. Um, <clears throat> I actually do most of my assembly in the shop now um, but here's a great thing is that we have air in the shop 
um, so we have a good uh, airflow, and we have some fans, so we can kind of keep the uh, <laughs> keep things going. Yeah, super glue is, uh, especially if you're using the Games Workshop plastic glue, it's uh, it's just crazy. So, um, but the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and um, yeah. What type of uh, are you using the Citadel uh, Lucky Eleven? Are you using the um, Citadel plastic glue? Are you using like Gorilla Glue super glue, or uh, what do you uh, what do you what's your glue of choice? Ooh, it looks like some of the Caradrons are making a move. Wonder if they're going to try to save their ship. Or the, oh, no, I think they're actually jumping out of the ship before it dies. Um, it's a great... Oh, it did die, and they've all just jumped out. So. <clears throat> so, let's see here. It does not appear to be much left. Um, uh, gel super glue. Purple bottle. Had it since six. That's a long time. That's some good glue if it's still working. Um... That is a very good glue. Um, So uh, what um, so uh, what's your what are you uh, what are you uh, assembling now that you're getting back into the hobby? What's your are you uh, 40k fantasy? You a specialist game like uh, a Necromunda or Blood Bowl? Like what are you uh, what are you working on? Oh, gonna bounce out real quick. Yeah, look at this. Uh, look at this old paint. Um, was it? it has a trademark. It doesn't have a year, uh, does it? Yeah. So, look at this old Citadel. This old Citadel color. Bad Moon Yellow. Bam. We have a couple of those. A 40k guard Space Moon orcs. Orcs. Yeah, we love the orcs, man. Um, I've been collecting orcs ever since Rogue Trader. Um, um, and, uh, yeah, and the new, sp uh, are you going with new um, Space Marines or, or, or the Primaris or are you sticking with the uh, the old shorties? What uh, What's your what's your goal? The Great Unclean one went through one of the frigates in one turn. That needs to be known. <laughs> <laughs> the Great Unclean one, Nate has reported, has chopped down a frigate in one turn with his super axe, uh, super sword of doom. Ouch. But, um, so, um, I am. I, I. It took a while, but the the new Primaris Marines have definitely grown on me, and especially the release of Shadow Spear has uh, definitely created some interest. <laughs> you know, looks like you painted them on drugs. Ouch. Um, <laughs> That's rough. Um, the uh, yeah, I I would one of the things I need to go back and do, and I probably should because I I just finished doing a ton of stuff for Necromunda, but what I really should do is kind of go back and uh, um, paint uh, and rebase my orcs um, because I you know I have all kinds of. I have so many orcs, but if I start with one squad at a time, probably things like the elites, like do a squad of, you know, 30 squad of, of shooter boys, then do a, a squad of uh, tank busters, then do a squad of looters, and then do another 30 box of boys to, to just rebase them onto the 32 millimeters. Um, 
but uh, I couldn't imagine going back and trying to repaint any of the armies I have. Uh, it just would be too much, just too much. Um, so, just it's just kind of crazy. Um, but uh, but I do know folks that have gone back and, and like they finish an army and they start go back to the first model they painted and they realize how different it is from the last model they painted you know so it's always good to practice on like I think especially with when I play things like orcs it's like that first you know mob of 30 guys helps you practice for those characters later so you know but such is the way I, I think it's hard to keep a consistent army and a consistent theme unless you just you have a paint scheme and you stick to it but even then like by the end um, typically you're going to have uh, typically you're going to have um, you know so much practice with things like edging and like just the models you do last you're going to end up looking better regardless so uh, it's just like one of the way it's just a way of the hobby um, but you know if you're not happy don't you know don't buy new models just do it um, I will say though the assault armies have not been as um, they have not been as effective in the uh, newer uh, in the newer meta, um, but that doesn't shouldn't stop you from doing it. Um, you know, like assaulty orcs are still pretty pretty good if you can get across there fast. Um, you know, first turn charges with your um, your like death killer war trike boss and all, a, a squad of bikes it's crazy there's a lot you can do um, <clears throat> so be right back i'm gonna go drop this on the recycling bin double check on the games i'll be right back Yeah, you know, it does seem that Imperial Knights are the um, are the way to um, uh, Imperial Knights seem to be the way to make um, any army that is struggling more effective just with minimal model count. Um, so that we'll see what happens. I mean, we're expecting the um, the updated uh, uh, fact, the spring fact, to be coming out any time. I mean, they could post that tomorrow um, uh, and see see if that changes because uh, Castellans might get a points bump. Um, we'll see. I, I can't imagine they wouldn't. They've been dominating the meta for, for a long time. But um, we'll see. Uh, and this also would be their first chance to tweak Orcs because um, when... Chapter Approved came out, Orcs have been out just such a very short time 
so we'll see if they do any adjustments. Um, you know, I, um, since the new codex has come out, I have played like, I would say, maybe two, three games with my orcs, um, and I've been pretty happy with them. Uh, the 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 bad moon orcs are just silly with shooting, and I haven't even included the uh, flash gets or the um, ludas in my armies when I'm playing. And they're just still ridiculous with shooting. Um, so I'm interested. I'd really like to try my kind of speed freak style army, which has a lot of trucks, a lot of boys, a lot of bikes, a lot of storm boys, and see if I can make um, a, a really aggressive assault style orc army work. Um, I feel like I would need to pick up a Death Killer War Trike and paint it up and get it on the table in order for it to be really as uh, effective as it could be. But it's definitely something I want to try. Um, <clears throat> but um, the Caradron player has the ten, the nine guys on the the ramparts there, and quite possibly maybe four models left. Outside of that, he has the big ship with a guy on it. And then he has a uh, two storm cast and one dude, um, and um, I think he's yeah. There's a lot of uh, yeah. There's a lot of uh, yeah. I think the he's dropping off a of, dropping a bunch of stuff on or shooting um, those demon those slaneshi demons off his hull. So um, and then. There'll be another assault phase, and we'll or and uh, we'll see what happens with the last of the models. But it's a uh, pretty going to be pretty short-lived for the Caradron. Um, and uh, if the the demons can effectively win next turn just by putting somebody over on the objective number two, because um, at that point at this point they they effectively own all the objectives. Um, but it'll be a it'll just be a table clearing massacre. Hundred boys, yeah, <laughs> an hour per turn is correct. Um, it'll be interesting to see with uh, if uh, what GW does with the next apocalypse, um, if they're going to be, uh, if they're going to be, you know, doing the next apocalypse. Um, it's very interesting to me. They they said something about movement trays. Um, now I don't know if it's me. I, I they had a picture and apparently there are clear movement trays. I couldn't actually visually like see them. That might be something to do with literally having glasses that like can see into the future. Um, in fact, I'm sure the movement trays are thinner than my glasses. But uh, so if they they'll have the movement trays, but there used to be the the um, the green tide where like a hundred boys and knobs and bosses and it was just amazing. Um, a, a green tide again would just be awesome. Sounds like a great like giant game thing to do. But yeah, I've been. Um, one of the things I've always wanted to do with Apocalypse is quite literally just have like a giant horde of orcs coming down against a giant horde of Imperial Guard infantry all trenched up. Um, and and minus, you know, it's like maybe you have one Stompa, maybe you have one Bane Blade, you know what I mean? But, but you don't like... Um, but you definitely don't have... Um, like, it just minimize those giant vehicles. I mean, so people think Apocalypse and they think... Like, oh, I get to bring out all the big stuff, like my knight, my titans from Forge World and all of that. And when I think Apocalypse, what I want is just a gigantic, two huge battles. Like, these just giant battles. Um, and, you know, you, it's just huge armies, not so much giant models. Um, uh, which kind of sets me apart, I think, from most people. But I would like to set up, like, get a few game, uh, get a few tables together and just slam... Um, armies against each other like set it up on a friday night and play friday night and saturday and then sunday and then be done on sunday afternoon and be like wow like the giantest game ever like try to do two turns a day 
that would be awesome and like try to get to turn four or five that would be my like idea of apocalypse where literally you have like you know orcs on top like orcs and orcs and orcs like charging against guard in the you know and you're they're replenishing and moving to the front and you have you know, but just all kinds of crazy stuff, orbital bombardments, and just nuts, like crazy nuts stuff. So, but I'll, alas, um, that's probably not the way it will end up being. So, so. Yeah, IG blobs do, um, you know, and you can throw, and um, I think IG benefits a lot from bubbles, um, from auras, uh, more so than other uh, armies, I think. Um, so they have, the IG blobs do seem to, to really benefit from the, uh, from a lot of, like, like different guard abilities, um, orders, and um, you get orders, you get bubbles. You get re-rolls. Uh, I think there's a lot that uh, IG blobs can be really good with. Um, you know, and, you know, they're... It's, it's interesting because of some of the stuff I thought would be really good in this edition is not. Like, the, um, the plasma tank everyone's still complaining about because I, I guess it has some rule where if it, it can literally blow itself up. Um, even if... Uh, so, even if it's not overheating. Um... <laughs> but um but i think blobs in general like um you know if you have the firepower to take out an imperial knight in one turn i feel like you probably have the firepower to take out a, a blob of like 30 guard uh 30 orcs or 50 guardsmen maybe not 50 guardsmen but you know i think you, if you have the volume of firepower i think the trouble comes with the 50 guardsmen is once you um uh, once you um, basically, um, uh, once you basically get going with, uh, uh, you know, it's like, oh, I took out thirty, but I have this leader who bubbles the aura that makes them fearless, so they effectively fearless, so they don't lose more models, and then they they don't disappear, you know. So I think that you know, IG blobs really like benefit from that because they're, you know, you can take like fifty of them. You know, so it's just a, a silly amount of guard. Um, but you know, I, I remember like, like I I have I wonder if scions are any good, um, because uh, like I, those models are just awesome. I just don't know if they're any good. Um, um, they're probably really good in kill team. I think the the scion pl plasma um, uh, scion plasma is really really good in kill team. So, so Lord, I don't know if you you can tell, but uh, everyone's saying goodbye to Rob out there. Um, but uh, yeah, I'd love to see um, I'd love to see Valkyrie deep uh, deep striking uh, scions like bouncing down to the back back of a battlefield again. That like while I always hated it as an orc player in you know the last four editions. I always really, you know, it was really cool when it did happen. Kind of like, oh, look, my, um, these guys are repelling out of a, a friggin' Valkyrie, like, in my backfield. Like, just cool stuff. You know, blasting the crap out of my grots and, and, their, uh, and their cannons. Because grot cannons used to be just the bomb. Um, and now they're, you know, indexed. So, um, and I, you know, now that orcs have a codex, you know, a lot of that index stuff will probably disappear. Um... And then, uh, you know, it'll always be good for friendly games, but I imagine that if it's index stuff will probably disappear for co competitive games. So, all right, let's see. We got some more dice rolling here.
looks nice. like the Nurgle is totally uh, like still there. So I'm gonna pop out. It's hard to tell if there are any models left in there. Let's go check. Uh, yeah, so um, they finally dropped the plague bearers down to a manageable number, uh, but it's uh, a little too late because they're f literally, um, I mean, 10 model, 12 models left down there. They're, they're like, uh, they're, they're, the Caradrons have the guys uh, that just jumped off the ramparts to claim objective three, and then they, uh, and they have two storm casts and three other guys there plus their ship. So there's a not a lot left to do. Um, so, but that said, um, since uh, it'll be very, there, there, there'd be have to be a lot of lucky rolls for the Caradrons to um, to win the game. But it's, it wouldn't happen at the end of turn three because there's neither um, nobody is in position to grab the objective in the back. Um, and currently the Caradrons have objective three. So Chaos one and two. Um, it looks like a pretty solid Chaos victory, however, uh, it, it might end up being a minor victory if Chaos can't get back to that other objective. Although the um, new Slanesh um, Herald with the stringy flesh instrument can, uh, can waddle her 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 bum back over there and grab that objective because she's just standing in a pile of lava. <clears throat> but this looks like a pretty big. Looked like they, you know, some moving around and. Looks like um
Yeah. So depending on, I mean, this could go really well for Nurgle, but I, um, or it could go really well for the the order. But it looks, I just can't imagine that order has much left in them, especially if they just target the the two. Um, if you target the two. Um, uh, storm casts first and take them out and their mortal wound output and then you just I guess mortal wounds don't really matter matter because uh, n the Nurgle just they don't care um, but they do get that bonus about like if they roll a one for battle shock they regenerate which is is really neat but maybe a little bit much when you're talking about like when you're talking about you know, ridiculous numbers of, like, like ridiculous numbers of, of plague bearers. So, so. yeah, and then just more bodies disappearing when there aren't a lot of bodies to go. A lot of bodies disappearing, um, and there just are not enough bodies for the Karajan. Let me go check. I can't really visually see what if what if those storm casts are left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 
All right, so looking pretty bad over there. Looking pretty bad. Um, so there's um, one, two. Um, so the. All right, so um, we're doing some battle shock, and we're going to move over to round three. Um, All right, so here we are at round three, and uh, yeah, the uh, oh, the ship is on the move. the mm, maybe I miss maybe I'm uh, misjudging because that ship could go over and gra grab an objective and then uh, and kind of shoot everything away but those you know over the course of a couple turns um, but the end of this you know it, this will be very difficult for Nurgle although this the keep the big giant uh, uh, great unclean one can run around the edge of the uh, the uh, uh, run around the edge of that castle uh, and there's some the little nurglings over there yeah the, and uh there's a ton of stuff that can uh basically um there are fiends in there there's all kinds of stuff that can still get in there to chop up there's one um storm cast of Akatar, um and like an endrigger and a, an aether chemist and that's about it over there um and then the ten and then the ten uh, 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 battle company, you know, and plus the ship, which is pretty heavily damaged by now. So let's we'll see how it goes. I'm gonna do a quick walkabout, um, and I will. Uh, I'll be back.
All right, everyone. So we're watching the final, uh, the final uh, the run of the uh, take it easy, Rob. Thanks for coming by tonight. Um, the final run of uh, of the Caradron as they start shooting off uh, the the ship up top, blasted away at a whole bunch of uh, um, demons of Slanesh. Um, five Nurgle um, respawned because uh, they, you know, you make Nurgle make enough uh, 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 battle shock tests. Eventually, they're going to roll a one and regenerate. So, uh, uh, so five five Nurgle uh, plague bears popped back in, and. Um, Something's off. Stone's blowing like this. Huh? So the 
Do you, th do you think the reason yeah. the problem they got destroyed was... Yeah. 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 Yeah, Every, I don't know if you notice everyone out in the, in the they're hobbying and also talking about potential end game things, uh, and I'm trying to listen because I'm interested. But also, um, I'm waiting for uh, the Caradrons to finally die, so uh, we can all uh, get put out of our misery. Um, the, uh, you know, sometimes these, uh, you know, the the final uh, final bits of the game uh, end up get dragging on um, when the you know the last gasp type stuff. But it is interesting because uh, uh, the the er, the the overlords uh, trying to uh, the overlords are trying to like eke out some sort of draw um, or um, or stop a major victory. But uh, it's just uh, the you know. But this uh, all the other games in the shop are all finished up. I think this one is uh, because the, all the others were uh, a thousand points, and this one was two. Um, but we had an odd number of folks today, so you know we doubled up a few people. It's kind of interesting because you really have no idea what's going to happen. Yeah. I mean, it's not. Besides the fact that they're probably going to beat Thanos, we don't really know. I'm seeing that shit more time. 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 I'm
you know, and it's like, dude, you should be locked up forever, like child porn. Yes. Like, disgusting, That's Jared. Disgusting. Like admitting to like. Um, sex with minors, you know, and even the way they phrase it in the newspaper, it's not like, you know, he, like, like, it's like, oh, consensual, like, you know, it's like, wait, but they're a minor, like, that's called rape, they can't like, it's called rape. if they're, yeah. you know, below whatever, consenting age. Yeah, <laughs> so anyway, anyway, we all started with, let's hope that you don't, um, explode <laughs> on the tip of the volcano. Have a f- fun and safe trip. Oh, thanks. Um, and safe flying and everything. I hope you don't get, like, bumped on planes. It's like the worst when you get ready to go to planes. Where are you flying out of? Logan. Logan, okay. Yeah. Parking in there too? No, I'm going to make Ray or my dad drop my brother and I off. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And then, yep. yeah. All right. Cool. And how old's your brother? 17. Ooh, fun adventure. Yep. Brother, sister adventure? Yeah. Yay. Yeah. Well, have fun. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for coming by today and spending some time with us. Oh. High five. Woo. Um, yeah. Have yeah. a great night. Thanks. Well, maybe I'll see you over the weekend. All right. I'll be here for sure. Okay. All right. Let's see here. Um, let's uh, put, take a quick peek and see what's left out there. here everyone I'm um, still everyone that's still out watching us it looks like there is a full-on like super duper um, move to just uh, try to get in there to eliminate the last of the carajons um, so yeah I, it uh, it looks pretty it looks pretty bleak um, chaos has fully abandoned all the objectives simply to just like move up and uh and and try to assault um the great unclean one has heaved itself over the side of the wall um and everything as there's one storm cast in the center of uh three uh seekers and you know the remaining remaining blob of uh plague bearers so pretty crazy pretty uh um and then the 10 um arcanaut company which will probably if the great unclean one is able to get close enough to them, we'll probably uh, just wipe them out. Like he kind of wiped out the uh, frigate in one fell swipe. Um, pretty crazy. But uh, so um, out there, uh, what's the? What do you think? Um, if you if you are still listening and have any ideas, like what what factions do you think still need some? Uh, what do you think will be one the next faction? So. There are a few things that are, you know, out there. We know that um, fire slayers are coming. We know that um, we know that uh, war cry is coming. Um, and uh, um, you know, so but uh, what uh, you know, for, and we know that uh, uh, Vanguard will be coming for. Uh, oh, this. Uh, bye, Brian. Hands a hand. <laughs> bye, Brian. Uh, Bye. How's the game going? Oh, it's brutal. Like it's like just a it's a so, foregone conclusion at this who, point. Chaos. Oh yeah, without a doubt. All right. Yeah. So, yeah, the Caradron have like with, gotta 11, uh, twelve with, models. We gotta left. deal. We have to deal with death. Anybody know in the chat? Who's Lucky? Uh, Lucky just uh, started following us today. Hi, Lucky. Um. 
so he was uh, talking about how he uh, was struggling. His uh, super glue yeah, smell was totally like killing him in the house. Oh no! Today. Yeah, <laughs> I like that smell. Yeah. That's probably explains just, explains it's a, a lot about me. <laughs> yeah, it's, it sounds like, it's, it smells like a hobby progress. All right. I'll see you. Uh, I'll post you tomorrow. Right. Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't if you have play kill team, I'm gonna play my hobby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hang out in hobby. I don't know how many I'm people are coming feeling, for kill team tomorrow. I'm feeling the rush for because um, I was coming up. I had to finish this army project. In time. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, see you tomorrow. Hey, thanks for coming by. See you, dude. I'll see you Wednesday. Yes, sir. Uh, but uh, what do you think uh, is uh, for the next armies? Like, what do you think uh, would be really good for um, uh, armies to get uh, bumped up and, and adjusted and such? Uh, let me know. Post up. Uh, tell me uh, if there's anything you're thinking. You taking off, mister? Yes, sir. Well, thank you so much for coming by. Good to see you. Yep. As always. Yeah. Um, I will be here Wednesday. Well, for Blood Bowl. All right. Cool beans. So I won't be here tomorrow. i got to okay. work on the boss's house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to shoot you an email with some questions. Okay. I'm sure based on the questions you'll figure out what my next project is. Okay. But just answer them. Okay. Will do, man. Or else. Or else, okay. I'll withhold crayons. <laughs> withhold crayons? What am I going to eat? Exactly. Uh. Now you got to answer the question. <laughs> Yeah, so... Yeah, so they... The, so, Seekers, excuse me, Fiends, have just charged. They have a, because they're, uh, they have a special uh, rule in a particular formation, um, they get to move 14. Um, uh, the, the Fiends, so the Fiends are up there on, on the charging up onto the ship. Uh, and the great unclean one is in combat with the um, with the rest of the Arcanauts, and there's still that one storm cast that's probably going to get ch chopped down by the um, by some uh, seekers and uh, Nurglings. This uh, the Slanesh and uh, the Slanesh Nurgle team up seems pretty powerful. You got the fast and the slow, and you got to deal with you have to figure out how to deal with both of them. Yeah, the Nurgle has completely abandoned uh, any, you know, the 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 hope of, of victory, uh, immediate victory, in favor of just getting rid of um, all the models, and then they'll win um, automatically um, on a. So.
Oh, so the bottom, uh, the the Arcanaut company is um, also uh, the bottom. They they've been you know, bookmarked with the great unclean one and Nurglings. Um, so the free spawning Nurglings are just a mess to deal with. I always are. So there's then uh so this uh, the fiends have to hit the ship and then the uh, yeah then everything will attack on the the single stormcast and the caradron that are left and then see what what. And then the last Stormcast is gone. Yeah, just picked up by Josh. And... Yeah, it looks so. Um, now uh, let's go back and do a quick summary of this battle. So, um, for, it's a uh, blood and blood and glory. Uh, the four objectives um, in the center of each quadrant, uh, and uh, Nurgle started on the top right, and uh, Slenish started on the top left, and the uh, um, and Caradron with some Stormcast allies started on the bottom. Um, Two thousand point game. Um, and the Slanesh, like turn one, s slams straight down, um, wiping out uh, um, a frigate and a unit of uh, um, a and a unit an Arcanaut company. And then turn two saw the um, surrounding and smashing of the rest of the ships except the last one, which is uh, in the center of the battlefield currently. Um, And here comes the, um, and now the Great and Clean one uh, smashed aside a, a frigate in one turn by itself, and then climbed over the battlements and jumped and sat on these poor Argonauts, um, and as just like everybody has been effectively squished. Um, Yeah, and that uh, is that. I think that um, now that the last, uh, now it's just the ship.
Alright, so it looks like the ship is still hanging on. Um, Alright, and then we will call it. Um, it is uh, 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 so a pretty brutal game for the, uh, the forces of order here, the Caradron. Um, forces of order uh, across the board. Um, well, every, basically death and chaos have smashed apart uh, most of this, uh, um, most of the aisles of uh, um, Argentinium. Uh, so it's been pretty brutal. Um, <clears throat> thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in, listening to me talk about random stuff. And uh, as our, uh, our our chaos forces smashed the Carabadrons to bits, um, really appreciate everyone. Uh, uh, Lucky, thanks for joining us and uh, and chatting with us a bit. And uh, we hope uh, everyone has a fabulous night. Um, and uh, we'll be back. Uh, we'll probably probably see you again on Wednesday. Um, where we will try to be doing some, uh, we'll probably try to do a short video about random stuff, or we'll just do some Blood Bowl. So thank you everyone for coming by, um, and uh, and uh, thanks for supporting us uh, on uh, on Twitch. Have a great night.